Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help. To recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Man. So, let me get the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do y'all have any questions about anything? I know we've been sitting here, we've been going over going over the scriptures, going over nationality, going over some laws. Do you have any questions about anything? No? Okay. So, we're going to read a few more sins that are plaguing our community. Because for far too long has our people been in the midst of adultery, but in the midst of same-sex relationships. Okay, been in the midst of idolatry. Celebrate Easter, celebrate their birthday. You don't know your nationality, you, you don't know who you are, and you are content with being on the bottom. You are content with having to go to these other nations and spend your money with them. You are content with the trash in your neighborhood. You are content with the drug dealing in your own neighborhood. You are content with black on black violence, and you look for no way out. Brothers come out here and give you a solution, and you want to score with us. But guess what? Whether you believe it or not, you are God's chosen people. That's right. The kingdom of heaven is on the way, with you or without you. That's right. Read the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Bring it out. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. The unrighteous are all those that do not keep God's commandments. That's right. When you go to the church on Sunday, you will not get the kingdom of heaven. Right. If you are a Muslim, you will not get the kingdom of heaven. Right. If you smoke cigarettes, get drunk, fornicate, you will not get the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Read. Be not deceived. These are fornicators. Fornicators, those that have sex outside of marriage. If you are a drug killer, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will die here in America when double nuclear fire or bombs hit this place. That's right. That's right. Idolaters. Idolater is a modern day Christianity. Islam, Christ, Buddhist. Buddhist, Hinduism, all of these man made religions and uh, philosophies. Rastafarianism. If you are involved in any man made religion on the face of this earth, you will be put to death. Read. Nor adulterers. Adulterers, those that cheat on their husband, cheat on their wife. You will die. You will die when bombs hit this place. That's Three. right. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. If you are an effeminate man, you have ladylike women tendencies, you will die at the second coming of Christ. Teacher. God made a clear cut distinction between a man and a woman. You interact that are supposed to be a woman. A woman. If you are effeminate with ladylike traits, you are not worthy to inherit the kingdom of God. Three, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, meaning sodomites. Sodomites, those that engage in same-sex relations. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. So contrary to what America has told you, that it's okay two men can get married, yeah, that may be okay here in Babylon, but that's not going on in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. In the kingdom of heaven, two men ain't finna be walking in the kingdom holding hands. Bring it out. Read. North East. Uh, we got a lot of thieves out here. Stick up boys. Jack boys. North East will inherit the kingdom of God. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Oh, hey, how many, how many drunkards have we seen out here today? Brothers out here nodding off, hitting the bottle. This afternoon, drunk. If you are a drunkard, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's not going to be going on in the kingdom. So to make a long story short, if you love this place of your captivity, remember you was brought over here on slave ships. If you love this depression, then you won't stay in this depression. You won't die here. 
Let's but we go. are here to tell you that there was something greater. That you are somebody. You are the greatest people to walk on the face of this earth. And God uh, requires something greater for you. Rick. No revelers. No revelers. We going to the club tonight. We at the strip club. Yeah. So, hey, you got you got them singles? If you like to revel, party on and on and on, get drunk, rioting, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That is an undisciplined, untamed spirit. We, nor extortioners, nor extortioners, okay, you're trying to extort brothers about their money, you're not going to get the kingdom. Why? That is unjust. God deals with just balances. We shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to get the kingdom. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse 26. We have to deal with the sins in our community. Because again, black man, Hispanic man, man of American, man and woman, you are God's chosen people. That's right. You are the Israelites. Okay? All my brothers down there. Y'all not just niggas, man. Teach, huh? Y'all not just niggas. Y'all not black. None of that. We have been lied to. Now, God is called, trying to call y'all to a greater purpose, to a greater understanding of who y'all are. Y'all customs, y'all nationality, y'all inheritance, y'all heritage, what to do, what not to do. We live it like this because we refuse to listen to this Bible. We want to listen to Buddy Bad Yo. We want to listen to Lil Herb. We want to listen to TV. If God got something to say, we don't want to hear nothing. And then wonder why we get shot down in the street. Right, we, we want to honor Paul Smoke, but we can't honor the prophets. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Verse 26, disquieting of good men, Read. forgetfulness of good turn. So the Bible talks about in these last days, there will be three, three again from the top. Disquieting of good men, disquieting of good men, because what? The nature of a man is supposed to do what? Keep God's commandments. That's right. Be a walking example of righteousness on this earth. Once you have become disquieted, you have become now sinful. Now brothers out here high. Now brothers out here drunk. Now brothers out here selling drugs to their own people. We forgetfulness of good. Defiling of souls. Now what is this going into? We changing of kind. What do the men do? Changing of kind. So the Bible talks about in these last days there will be changing of kind. That there will be men that desire to be women and women that will desire to be men. What is that is going into your modern day transsexual? All right. The Bible prophesied that in these last days this thing will happen because of iniquity in the midst of our nation. Black man, Hispanic man, it is time to repent and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. All right, once again, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man and woman, you are the Israelites according to this Bible. That's right. For far too long have you been lied to. You've been lied to about who you are, where you come from. My brothers, my brothers, I got a question for you. Do you know your nationality? Okay, okay, come here, come here. Let, let, let me deal with you, bro. Let me deal with you, bro. Okay, real quick. What's your name, man? How you doing? Anthony, my name is Uriel. All right, nice to meet you, bro. We appreciate you. All right, so let's start there. You say, what's your nationality? The brother said his nationality is African-American, and we're not trying to, I'm not trying to be a bride to put you on the spot. It's just, we want everybody to be edified by this. All right, so, you just know, uh, give me the history on the term African-American. When were you born? What year? 1980, okay? So, you know you can search research this. The term African-American, do you know what that comes from? Psalms 29 and 11. Do you know what the term African-American comes from? Okay. Did your, so your father, right? He was born before you. In his day, were they called themselves African-American? Okay, read, I'm going to show you something. Read this. Psalms chapter 49 verse 11. Read it out. Their inward thought is, that their houses shall continue forever. Right, so the Bible was prophesied about the so-called white man. It says his inward thought in his house, America, London, England, France is going to continue forever. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. They call their land. So the Bible says that this oppressor that is brought into the slavery, they call their land after their own name. After their own name. So the term African-American Bro, did you know that that comes from two white men? You know. The term Africa comes from a Roman general by the name of Leo Scipio Africanus. That's right. Who conquered 
Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars. Leo Scipio Africanus, hence Africa. Do you know where the term America comes from? Amerigo Vespucci, who was an, an Italian navigator. Hence, we got the term America. So when you call yourself African-American, you saying that you descend from two white men because that's where the term comes from. That's right. Bringing more sense to you. Did you, did you know our people, Jesse Jackson, coined that phrase in 1987? Before 1987, we never called ourselves African American. Right. We was Negroes, we was colored, we was Afro American, we was black, and we African American. Our nationality keeps changing. You see what I'm saying? So I'm showing you on a, on, on a chronological sense, when you were born, nobody was calling themselves African American. And then to bring more sense to it, it come from two white men. You see what I'm saying? Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. I'm going to show you why you don't know who you are, bro. Because if you look at this sign, look at this sign right here, folks. Do you see yourself on this sign? Hey, what is it on the left? What is what God, God calls us? Oh, right. On the left is what God calls us. It's on the right is what our oppressor has called us once he's strict. Our name. You see Roots? Remember Roots that was whooping on his back? And what was he doing? He talked about his name was Kuti Kente, Kuti Kente, and he whooped him so much until he accepted what his oppressor, his oppressor was giving to him. But they was depicting that with us, but we not Africans. Right you see what I'm saying? We are Israelites, bro. You see us on that side? You are God's chosen people. That's right. You are the descendants of Abraham, I Isaac, and Jacob. Christ, Peter, Jacob. But no, 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 it's more than that, bro. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm Bro, so you're not black African American. That was a time that was given to us in slavery, right? According to this Bible, we are the real Jews. We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. God's chosen people. But we don't know who we are. We are in this condition because of sin. We broke God's commandments and continue to break God's commandments. That's why the greatest people on earth is at the bottom. You see what I'm saying? Read what you got. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. Take a flight. So, hey, get his brother a flight. All right, get in contact with us, bro. But believe more than anything that you are an Israelite. God's chosen people, bro. Right. And you must repent and get, cut, gotta come back and keep these commandments. Right. All right? Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So the Bible says that you so called black man out here that you all gotta discontinue or be cut off from your heritage. You're going to be cut off from understanding who you are. You're going to be cut off from understanding who you are. You're going to be cut off from understanding how you're supposed to eat. My brother, my brother, you got a minute? What's your name, man? Holler at me for a minute. Hey, hey, I got a question for you. You got a question for me? Holler at me, holler at me. Holler at me. Holler at me. Hey, all right, come here, G. Jason, okay, read what you got. Thy heritage that I gave thee. So oh, thy heritage is God's law, statutes, and commandments. He's, God said He gave you a heritage, right? right? So believe me, bro. Your heritage. What you? you what you say? You black, African American, Afro American. What you say? Your heritage is your nationality. To serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. So we did not know this land of America. God said because of our sins, he brought us over here to serve our enemies. For one of all things. So when you want to know, try to learn about God, when you want to send your kids to school, when you want to get a, a, a loan on a home, a loan on a business, you have to now learn from your oppressor and submit yourself to your oppressor because you did not want to serve the Most High God. Read. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger. Isaiah 51 and 20. All right. So I want to deal with, with, with the things that I see out here right now. Why is it that the black man is content with being on the corner? All day long. All day long. When God made the entire world for you. That's right. God made the entire world for you. But we want to be content on Madison and Pulaski. Where we got to pay taxes to the white man that come through here. But we got to go to most furniture to the Arab and still, you know what I'm saying, spend money with him. And he take that money back to this country to, to support his people. And But we think we run the block, though. Tell what you got. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. 
Thy sons have fainted. So God has said, my sons, which are you so-called black men, Hispanic men, Native American men, because you are the Israelites, according to the Bible. That's you right. are God's chosen people that went into slavery because you don't want to listen to God. That's you right. are those same rebellious people that was in the wilderness with Moses. That's right. You are those people. The real Jews went into slavery on slave ships. That's who you are. It's in this Bible. Bring it out. But you'd rather go to your lying Christian pastor who ain't doing nothing but making money off you and not really teaching the book. So you know what you say? You say the hell with it all and just reject the whole book. But it's not the book. It's your understanding of the book. Wake them up. The Bible say that thy sons have what? Thy sons have fainted. They have fainted, bro. When you faint, what happened to you when you faint? You ain't, you lost consciousness. So that's what God is saying. My, my sons have lost consciousness. They don't know who they are. That's why the brother out here talking about he, he don't know who he is, right? But him understanding who he is is the first step of his salvation. And coming back into that righteous place that the Most High made him, made him to be in the beginning. It says that thy sons have lost consciousness. They have fainted. Read. They lie at the head of all the street. And where, where's God's sons at? The head of all the streets. So I want to tell you, bro, when you when you go out west, right? When you go out south, the black man, where is he? Is he in the library? You know. He on the corner, bro. We just read that out of the Bible. There's no way you can convince me that this Bible ain't real. Right. Where where is God's sons at? At the head of all the streets. It say that God's sons is at the head of all the streets. Look around. Who out here on the block? God's sons, and they don't even know they're God's sons. Read. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. So you know uh, what they call it, matadors, right? A wild, when you catch a bull, they bucking up. But he say that these young men is on the corner like a wild bull in a net. They trapped. Full of, they don't know how to get out of the condition that they are in. That's why we out here to show them that they can get out of this condition. Believe me, bro, ain't none of us up here was perfect. We, every single one of us came out of the same streets of Chicago. You, you looking at repentant men that stand in bold for this Bible. We, 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 we ain't no church boys came out of no Christian church. This ain't no hallelujah, we won't church. This is these straight up real men out of the south side, west side of Chicago. That's out here teaching the Bible now, because we know this the truth. Read. They are full of the fury of the Lord. And the full fury of the Lord is what we was reading. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Us going into slavery on slave ships, the curches being sold to our enemies, right? Having to subject ourselves to, to, to all these other nations. Serving our enemy for want of all things. That's the fury that God is talking about. Read. The rebuke of thy God. God, the rebuke, the correction of God because we didn't want to listen to him. Read. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. God say we are afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. You understand? Read. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord, thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. So the Bible say that God has taken his cup of trembling from us when we repent. His fury, his rebuke is still on us because we still in the midst of sin as a nation. Teacher. You see what I'm saying? So once you, black man, Hispanic man, decide that you don't want to be in this condition no more, that's when God going to come help you. That's right. But as long as you are content with being out here on Madison Pulaski, using drugs, selling drugs, being drunk, being at the bottom, serving your oppressor, worshiping your birthday, Christmas, Easter, all these pagan holidays. Right. As long as you is okay with you being in this condition, God is okay with you being in this position. Right. If you want help, God does that to help you. If you want to listen, God want to listen. But as long as you is okay with this sin and this condition that you're in, God is cool with it. You don't want change, then God don't want change. Plain and simple. Read. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. He want, he want to prove, you say prove to you that you are an Israelite? All praises. All praises. Right, right. All right, give me Deuteronomy 28. Hey, all praises. So I, I see some of y'all over there on the bus stop listening. My brother right, bit, right here listening. The brother has an excellent question because I made a statement. I said, you understanding who you are is the first step of your salvation. 
Because who is the kingdom of heaven for? The Israelites. The kingdom That's of heaven ain't for no African Americans. All right, but we about to prove to you who you are, right? Because what do you say your nationality is now? Black man, okay. Deuteronomy 28, 15. So let me start somewhere, right? Bring it up. If you go to Midway or go to O'Hare, right? Could you get a plane ticket to black? That don't exist. So how are you a black man? Ain't right. no nation called black. Ain't no language called black. That's not an ethnic origin of people. You see what I'm saying? So I'm showing you to begin with, to start off, first and foremost, you're not black. So if you're not black, then who are you? We're going to show you. Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So I want to make another point. When we came over here in slavery, right, what did our slave master not want us to do? We couldn't what? Read. Read. They did not want us to read. Now think about this. If you got a slave, wouldn't it be beneficial for you if your slave knew how to read? Because that's going to bring more economic, you know what I'm saying, and more benefit to you. But it was a particular reason why they did not want us to read. Because they knew when we read this and learned this, who we are, it's over for them. So let me show you something, brother. Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So are you familiar with Moses? So what's going on at this point is, remember, we were slaves in Egypt. God sent Moses. And told him, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You remember, uh, do you recall? Right, that was us, believe it or not. Mo then he split the Red Sea. And we walked through the Red Sea. So now, th at this point, we on the other side of the Red Sea. And now this is Moses having a conversation with us. The whole nation of Israel, who is our people today. All right, read it again. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. No, the whole world. All Israel. No, the Chinese. Unto all Israel. So this is a one, just like how me and you having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between Moses and all Israel. That's it. Right. Chapter 28. Bring it out. Verse 15. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Who Moses talking to? All who? All Israel. Good. Read. But it shall come to pass. So remember, Moses was a prophet. I mean, he prophet. He, he was telling us what was going to happen before it happened. That's why he said it sh shall come to pass. I Meaning, this is what's going to happen in the future. Okay, he said it shall come to pass that what? If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, he said, bro, if you don't listen to God, this is what's going to happen to you. To observe. To do all his commandments. No, just take command. All his commandments. No, just the commandments I want to do. All his commandments. They done away with. To observe to do all his commandments. So he said, if you don't do all of God's commandments, this is what's gonna happen to you. And his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee to say. But all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you hear that? Oh, uh, I approve you. Not yet. So God said through Moses that if you don't listen to keep my commandments, curses is going to come upon you. Give me that. Yes. So he said, if you don't listen to keep my commandments, curses, curses is going to come upon you. All right. So through these curses, we're going to be able to identify who what? Who the Israelites are. You see what I'm saying? Because the Israelites was the ones that's cursed. Now, if these curses bear witness with you, then what's the who are you? Let me show you that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So because we broke God's commandments, one of the curses was we was going to become an astonishment. What is an astonishment? Like, amazing. Like, damn, how the hell are they selling drugs? Like, look at their community. Like, how the hell are they doing that to each other? Right? God said we was going to become an astonishment. Read. A proverb. A proverb. You know what a proverb is? A proverb is a wise saying. Like, what? Uh, all black people like chicken and watermelon. Well, all Mexicans carry knives. You know what I'm saying? All black men late, lazy, don't take care. Of, like all these wise, evil sayings about our people. Right. That's a proverb. And a byword. That's the point. And a byword. Now, do you know what a byword is? A byword is black, African American, Negro, color. All right. Give me the. Give me verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 48, therefore, hey brother, hold on, hold on, don't go nowhere, bro, don't go nowhere. So right now we're proving that in the Bible, who, what's your nationality? My sisters, my sisters, give me a minute. I want to ask y'all a quick question. What's your nationality? African-American, hey, can I ask y'all a quick question? 
sis, 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 right quick. Hey, brothers, 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 can I ask y'all a quick question? What's your nationality? Who are you? Uh, you say African American, right? Sis, stay with me, stay with me. I want to, I'm about to show you something. All right, I'm, listen to what I'm saying. Sis, listen. If you give me three minutes, I promise you, what I'm about to show you in three minutes is going to be the greatest thing that you'll ever learn in your life. I guarantee it. All right. So you say your name is, uh, your nationality is African American. I beg to differ because I can prove to you who you really are. I'm about to show you. All right. Give me verse uh, one and one again. I'm about to show you. Give me three minutes. All right. So out of this Bible, right? This is the book of Deuteronomy. This is Moses having a conversation with the Israelites. Do you know who the Israelites are? Are you right? You, will you set yourself up for something great if you just give me three minutes? All right, let's go. One and one. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So this is Moses speaking to who? All Israel. So, that, so in the book of Deuteronomy, is Moses speaking to who? All Israel, right? Don't forget that. Go ahead to chapter 28. Give me verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, Shalt thou serve thine enemies? So Moses said, because we broke God's commandments and don't want to keep them, we gonna serve who? Thine enemies. Now how are we gonna serve our enemies? Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. If you want any fool, who owns yours? Who owns Kroger? Who own we we don't our enemies, right? Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you want Sprite, Dasani, Aquafina, Gatorade, Coca Cola, if you don't pay your water bill, Hennessy. Who you gotta pay to who you gotta go to if you want something to drink? This is pro proven in the Bible who you are. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. You want to buy any clothes, you have to go to the other nations. I don't care if the brother do got his own stuff. Who you getting this text down from? Read. And in what of all things? And anything you think, if you want a peppermint, you gotta go to your, the other nations. See. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron. What he gonna do? Put a yoke of iron. Somebody give me the depiction. Where's the sign? Where's the sign? The Bible say that he gonna put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Now, what people examine? Remember history. When did the Chinese have yokes of iron on their neck? When did the Arabs have yoke of iron on their necks? When did the East Indian never saw it? So, who is this Bible talking about? Who was it talking about? The Israel, remember? So, if this happened to you and your people, sister, what's your nationality? Out that God say you are. You an Israelite. That's right. Now, this is the money scripture right here. This is the money scripture. How do we get over here? Yeah, as a people. Did we take a bus over here? How? What was the what kind of boat? Was it a carnival cruise line? Was we on that plane put put mini golf? Then you slave ships. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. You I said three minutes, I'm at two. Alright? Now I'm about to, with this verse, this is the icing on the cake. All right, read what you got. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. So real quick, remember, Moses, remember the Lord sent Moses into Egypt and he said, tell Pharaoh to let my people go? Because the Israelites were slaves in what? Egypt, under Pharaoh. That's why he sent Moses to deliver us. You see what I'm saying? So we was what in Egypt? We were slaves in Egypt. All right, read this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So remember, if you just got delivered, if you were Israelite at this time, you just got delivered out of Egypt and God's going to bring you to Egypt again. And yo, man, you think you're going to go back to what? There you go. Read. With shit. God going to bring us into slavery again with what? With shit. With That's what? Right. Shit. How do we get over here to the shores of American slavery? I didn't say nothing. Read the verse again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. into slavery again. With what? With ships. How do we? Who went into slavery on slave ships? Who went into slavery on slave ships? So, who is this in the Bible we reading about? Who is Moses talking to? So, what's your nationality? All praise right. to the Most High. You know what's good about being Israel? It's, 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 something, it's, it's like, okay, I'm Israel. Like, you don't see no significance about it. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. There you go. I'll pray. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Verse 6. This is why it's important to know that you are Israelite. Yeah. I'll pray. Read. For thou art a 
and holy people. Because the Bible says that Israel is a holy people. Are we not supposed to be niggas, thoughts, all out here in the club and not no. God said we are a holy people. Free. Unto the Lord thy God. Who's God? Thy God. Thy God means your God, which means he's not the God of everybody. That's right. Free. The Lord thy God. Has chosen thee. No, he chose everybody. Chosen thee. He chose the Chinese word. Chosen thee. He chose you. Right? Let's say you got a uh, six pairs of shoes and you choose these shoes. What, what, what does that mean about the other five pairs of shoes? They did not get chosen, which means they left out. So out of all the nations on the earth, God chose you since it be his holy and special. That's right. Three. To be a special people. No, to be niggas. To be a special people. To be thoughts and foes and uh, vice lords. Chosen thee to be a special people. To be a special people. Read. Unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all people. Not nah, equal. Above all people. That's why it's important to know you're an Israelite. Because if you know you're an Israelite, you so called black men are above the Chinese man. Y'all are above the Arab man. Above the white woman, she is beneath you. That's right. right. Is that is that what I, that's out of the Bible? That's what the Bible said. Okay, so if you understand that, sister, that you being an Israelite is something that you're supposed to be Straight doing. Out. It's something that you're supposed to be doing because Israelites supposed to be doing what? Keeping God's commandments. We went into slavery because what? We broke God's commandments. Twenty-two and five. So what you know that you're an Israelite is in your process of repentance and coming back to your nationality your God. Things that don't sell a current condition that you must change. Just like I'm not saying it in maliciousness. Just like all of us, when I heard I was an Israelite, it was so much stuff I was doing, I had to change. Because God said I'm an Israelite. Now, this is one thing that I see that you uh, could do apply to begin your process of repentance. Because you are an Israelite. God gave these laws to his people. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman. The who? What's your name? Shade. So Shade, the Israelite, the woman, right, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You too, because you're an Israelite too. God said that his daughters, his princesses, should not wear what pertain unto a man. No, 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 no. I am a Hebrew Israelite. You are an Israelite, yes. Hey, sis, hold on. What that mean? What that mean? Hold on, hold on, I'm not done. You trying to get up out of here. Hold on. Okay, it's okay. So we with you, we with you. Okay, well, all right, this is last scripture. All right, read it again from the top. Hold on, sis. This is for you too. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Stop right there. So the Bible says a woman not supposed to wear what belongs to a man, and a man's not supposed to wear what belongs to a woman. So, start with the man. What is it that belongs to a woman that a man is not supposed to wear? What what article, what piece of clothing belongs to women that men are supposed to wear? A dress. Dress, bra, right. We're reading the Bible. So, listen, listen, right? So, on the flip side, what is it that belongs to men that women are supposed to be wearing? Pants. Pants. You see that? Don't, don't pay attention to them. Pants. So in your process of repentance, you're supposed to put on a what? A dress. Yeah, a dress. You see that? But these little things that you may think is insignificant is really dealing with your salvation and getting into the kingdom because ain't no women in the kingdom going to be walking up in there no pants on. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Is that for now you're one and eight? Now let me show you what, remember, I did not write this. We did not write this. This is out the Bible. This is what God says is going to happen to every woman that want to wear pants and every man that want to wear a dress. This is what God says is going to happen to him. Read. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come to pass. Yeah, that shall come to pass again. It shall come to pass. Whether you believe it or not, just like God said it was going to come to pass, we're going to go to slave, slavery on slave ships. Did that come to pass? So you best believe this one's going to come to pass too. Read. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the sacrifice, somebody get what? Put to death. So in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, meaning he comes back to heal. Read. Then I will punish the princes and the king's children. So he will punish all of the Israelites because we are the princes and the king's children. Read. And all such that are clothed with strange apparel. Right, what's that word? Clothed. What? Clothed. What? Clothed. Clothed. With what? Strange apparel. Meaning God is going to be putting people to death. They simply based on what they wear. 
because he told women to put on what? A dress with fringes on it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.